everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Chanel in the City. I'm your host, Chanel Omari, and I have a very special guest here with us today. She is an actress, an entrepreneur, and the original housewife of Dallas, a.k.a. the queen of Dallas housewives. Please welcome Leanne Locken over Zoom. Hi. <laughs> Yay. I'm Zooming. I'm just telling you, there should be like a new catchphrase for 2020. I'm zoom I'm Zoomalicious. I'm Zoomalicious. You know? I love it. I'm Zooming too. Look at these catchphrases you're using. Yeah. I love so much. <laughs> you know me, girl. You give me three seconds and I'll give you a new uh, one hit. I know. You're so good at that. <laughs> Speaking of how beautiful you look, talk to us about- You are like, so sweet. What are you wearing? How do you, I mean, how are you during this pandemic, you know, with everything going on? You know, you know, I know, I know there, I, I know that there are a lot of people out there struggling and um, that breaks my heart. And, you know, I'm doing all that I can in my city, in my community to try and alleviate a lot of that. I'm working with keeping families connected, feeding, um, you know, underprivileged families in some of our, our more uh, dangerous neighborhoods are more, are, they're dangerous because they are in danger of not sustaining their living or ending up homeless. So I'm really working in some of those more vulnerable neighborhoods. Um, I am working with uh, Dallas Street Dog Advocates to continue to try to place a ton of animals in new homes. You know, listen, if you're home and you don't want to spend a lot on cable, a new puppy is the way to do it. Or a new dog. You don't even have to get a young one. There's a lot of old ones with a hell of a lot of personality left that um, I actually consider my dogs dog TV, like watching them, like my, my yard team is here right now and watching them act like they are pit bulls when these yard people come cracks my ass off. Seriously. They're more, they're more entertaining I, than housewives, right? I'm oh my, oh my, oh, come on. I, I truly believe that I could potentially be the only housewife that ever, ever had a conversation more than once on camera with just her and her dog. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm almost 100% sure I, I'm potentially the only human that that they thought it was great like they lo when I would talk to Carly they would be like oh yeah you want to have a conversation oh perfect yeah let's have you and Carly talk to each other and I'm like y'all realize she doesn't talk right <laughs> <laughs> but um but you know dogs are like it's so entertaining for me and um and you know and and sadly you know it, the pandemic has done everything it can to um, increase the amount of domestic violence and childhood violence. And uh, so I'm working a lot with a lot of organizations here to also find ways to uh, teach people how to avoid it, how to resolve it, how to remove themselves from the situation if necessary, and just how to have a healthier, better life. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always busy. There's there's nothing about Leanne Locken that says slow or dead. I love that. And I love how much you're giving back. Talking about, you know, you touched base a little bit on mental health. Um, yeah. Especially during the, during the pandemic, you're helping women. You know, it is true. There's a lot of abuse. There's a lot of domestic violence we're not even aware of. What are some of the tips you can give us, you know, dealing and coping with mental health on a daily basis, you know, our ups and downs? You know, I'm sure you've had them too, you know, something you can share with us. Oh my gosh, listen, I'm, I'm really honest and open about the fact that I, I struggle with mental illness. I struggle with depression. And, um, and it's, it's, a, it's a, sometimes on a daily basis a torment for me as well. But I can say this, there are a few tricks that I've learned that really help me stay motivated and positive. Um, and the best tip that I could give anyone is, what's the one thing you do every day from home? And that is you, hopefully, or even just to your computer, like a person. So I have to log in to my computer and I make that password um, something that is inspirational and I change it on a monthly basis. So whatever the affirmation is, I believe in me, you're, you are amazing, you are worthy, you are, I am loved, um, I am valuable. Um, think about those as a password. And that way, every time you open your computer, you are reminding yourself of your value and your worth and that you are not alone because you're not. I mean, that's, I think 
the one thing that that leads to depression and that also increases depression is being alone and feeling alone. And I think people need to realize that, I mean, if you see it everywhere you go, you can turn on the computer and log into a Facebook group and you'll see a ton of people saying, I feel alone. I feel unworthy. Um, you're not, right. you're not. And you're not the only one feeling that way. It's not a unique thing. Kind of like being fat, not a unique thing. Yay, right. COVID-25. Right. <laughs> I meant to that sister. Cause that's so true. Especially you sharing your, such your, your vulnerability. I think a lot of times we relate to you, especially is because you're so honest and you're so open with your feelings. And I always stress to my audience, you have to be open with your feelings. You do. You know, and thank you for giving that, us that inspiration because you are making us feel less alone. I suffer and battle through depression and anxiety. And oh. you know, I had a one-time series on Bravo as like, you ha had multiple series. We're going to get to Housewives. But I've, I've, you know, went through those reality series of ups and downs and thought I wasn't good enough and worth, en worth it enough or with men or whatever the case may be. So now you're giving us like this hope of, no, you got to keep on going and you got to really believe in yourself, you know. So thank you for that. Uh, but I, yeah. also, I also want to say, you're welcome, but I also want to say, feeling like that isn't not normal. You are not, it's, it, the, the word normal drives me insane because yeah. basically there are two types of people in the world. There are authentic people and there are people who want you to believe in their perception of what they want you to believe. Most people call those people fake. Um, but I believe in authenticity. I believe in, um, look, I, uh, by no means am I perfect. I still super glue cracks back together all over me. Um, I, I have cellulite. I am fat from the pandemic. I uh, do not eat healthy on a daily basis. Damn you, Jack in a Box Tiny Tacos. <laughs> uh, I am human. And I think when we all realize that when we struggle, it doesn't make us not human. It makes us human so when you see a person who doesn't struggle with anything or struggles and then quickly survives or you know i just I, to me it's like you know just be authentic you know depression is something that is a lifelong problem and it doesn't go away because people are like what do you have to be depressed about you have a pool and you have an amazing husband and you have a fabulous house trust me i still have gas i still you know there's just, just real problems still exist for me and and it's and and to each his own of what a real problem is. I love that. You know, don't I think as long as we learn not to judge, be less judgy of one another. Oh, great. Speaking of your amazing f uh, family and husband, because I met yes. you, when I met you guys, your husband is just you know what I love about uh, your husband. He's so old school. Like he just does, only looks at you as if you are the most beautiful woman in that room, and that's what we all strive for, right? And I think that's the fairy tale we see with you that we want for ourselves. Talk to us about how your relations, the listeners want to know, how has your relationship been during the pandemic? I mean, you look very happy, Leanne. You oh my God, can, thank you. You thank do, you and I'm because so I, happy for you, because I, I love you. You're such, an, you're such a good person, because I know you personally, and you deserve it. You really do, so. You, you are so sweet, and I have to say, you know, that's the one thing, like, I'm just started to go have lunch with friends again and all that. And every time I see someone that I haven't seen in like six months, they're like, oh, you're glowing. You look so happy. And I'm like, I am like for the first time in so many years, there isn't, there isn't stress. Anything that I'm building, I'm building out of a genuine desire. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, this is, I know the pandemic has been hard on people and I don't, I don't want this to make anyone feel bad, but I've enjoyed the pandemic right? and I've enjoyed my time alone because I've considered it like a growing therapy time for me. And it's, it's just been amazing. And you're right. I got lucky with my husband. No, I didn't get lucky. I slept with a lot of frogs. <laughs> to get to him. Yeah. I fucked frogs for a living. <laughs> and, and, um, yeah, by the way, not fun. Um, and the reality is that I, I just waited for the right one. I waited. I mean, I didn't meet him till I was in my forties and, you know, we got married 10 years after being together. Listen, wow, yeah. Uh, everybody, everybody's like, Leanne, she just rushes into everything. I'm like, Oh no, I don't. Y'all ain't met me. Right. I don't, I don't, it takes me a year to switch tampons. I mean, I, I'm like, <laughs> I'm cautious. And, um, and I did, I, I, God, you know, God 
saw all that frog fucking and was like, you really deserve a good one. And so that's a good I got title a good for a book, one. by the way. That's a good title for a book. Frog, frog fucking. Yeah. Frog fucking by Leanne. Frog Lockett. fucking. How to date. Why not to do it? What? <laughs> <laughs> right. And how to make, how to meet the man of your dreams. Because I, you're right though. You have to do a lot of that in order to meet the right guy. You do. And I will say something else. He was right for me because I remember there was a time, it was a New Year's Eve, um, and we got into a hellacious fight. I'm 100% sure I was not only responsible, but started it. <laughs> and, um, and I just remember, you know, you know, you get a little alcohol in you and you're just like, I'm all that in a bag of nachos. And, uh, and so, um, so I, I remember chasing him down the freeway naked underneath a fur coat because I was not going to let this argument end because I had all this. Right. And I remember getting into his, um, in, near into his place where he was, you know, going to land at his house. And I went, you're leaving this. And he was like, uh, yes, good night. <sighs> and walked away from me. And I was like, well, that's the first time that shit didn't work. Like, what happened? Right. And it was because he, he wanted more for me. He said, you know, basically he was telling me, no, that isn't all you have. That isn't all you are. And when you meet someone who believes in you and makes you believe in yourself even more, um, it's, that's when, you know, it's forever. You know, I, I remember when we were planning the wedding and during that time and, and getting everything ready for it, you know, he, he used to say to me all the time, he's like, I'm so excited. You are going to be my wife. And I was like, what is wrong with you? Like, you know, like, are you like special? Like what's wrong with you? And he was just like, you just don't understand Leanne. You really are the one, you know, you're the one that I tell things that I've never told anyone to. And for me, that just, instilled in me why we belong together, you know? So it takes time to find that right person. It doesn't mean, you know, have your mother help you figure out how to manipulate them into marriage. It right. means wait for the right one. The one who, no matter how you behave, looks at you and goes, you know, I still love you, but I know you can do better. And I waits for you to do better and be better, you know? So yeah, yeah, I got lucky. I can't, I'm gonna keep saying that, I got lucky. Now, my new luck is after you have fucked a lot of frogs that's and know what say. doesn't work. That's, I was going to ask you, like, right, because a, a lot of our listeners are talking about rules and they always ask us, you know, what, you know, especially if you had a tip for us single ladies out there, you know, do you have, are the rules really important when it comes to dating? Can you have sex after the ninth date and still have him take you seriously or not? Or is it about, like you said, if he's the one for you, he will be the one for you? I had sex with Richard the first date. No way. I... I I, I, oh yeah. So you see, hello, I raped his ass. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> like, I know I'm not supposed to say that. And no, I'm I'll take that. making light of it since I'm a childhood sexual yeah. survivor, uh, abuse survivor, but, but I, no, no, we're using I, it loose like, right. Yeah. He was like, we're not, I go, I'm cause I was honest. I said to him, you know, while I'm straddling him, um, I, I'm really struggling. I really like you and everything that I know tells me if I like you not to have sex with you, but I really want to have sex with you. And, and I was sober y'all. This was not drunk. Believe me. After our first dinner date, I sat in the, in the bar while he continued to have cocktails and had an entire French press pot of coffee. Thank you. <laughs> Rattlesnake bar at the Ritz Carlton. Sober and, sex um, is always the best anyway, so. Oh, my God. And, and to be honest with you, you know, that was when I was like, wait, I'm, I'm sober, and I really, like, I really want this. So basically, no, I don't think, listen, I don't think rules apply because to say that rules apply mean that the rules apply to everyone. And we're all different. Situations are all different. Um, you know, life is different for each of us. So, you, you, I think if you're looking for a recipe to make the same cake every time, that's great. But do we all want to eat the same cake every time? You know, sometimes you don't. And, and I think that you just, I think what makes a relationship great is honesty and communication. And it's when we, you'll find that most relationships fail when communication stops. And I think that, you, you know, it's, it's why... I shared so much of my life on the show was because communication is what makes people, that is how people relate to one another.
Um, and it made me sad that, that the other cast was like constantly, oh, your story, your story. Yes, how do you relate to someone? We've shared similar past. We've shared similar experiences. We share similar wisdoms or similar laughs. Um, you, it's how you relate to one another. And for me, I relate to broken people mm -hmm. because I am broken. And I share that I'm broken because I want to be able to inspire people to realize that broken people can still be successful, can still be loved, can still get married, and can still be happy. And that's yeah. something that a lot of broken people don't believe in. So that was my goal. That was always my goal. And Always. I love, and you know, I love that about you because you've also mentored us, you know, young kids, a lot of young kids as well. And, 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 and women empowering women. I feel like you really are the definition of empowerment of women and you've taken me under your wing and you've done even this podcast is, is, is just such a testament of like how much you believe in others. And that's why I'm so thankful and appreciative of, of, of you. Speaking of housewives, you know, I think we're shocked because four seasons, you've been the queen, you've been the original OG, you've been an authentic character talk to us about your side of story why did you decide to step away and move on to new projects what was your thought process you know the reality is i felt like after five years of working with you know pretty much the same core of women um that i was always going to be the target and i was always going to be their scapegoat for i don't have much going on so let's fight with leanne and you know you can Every article that you read about Dallas, all roads lead back to Leanne. And I just honestly don't think people understand the amount of stress that that can cause on one human. It wasn't my job to carry that show. It, it never should have been my job. But because some other cast are lazy, um, it became, they forced it on me and then they attacked me for being it. Right. And I just got to a point where the toxicity level was just too much, you know? Look, I, I'm not perfect. I made a ton of mistakes on that show, but I grew a ton on that show. And I hope that the audience saw me grow and grew with me because that was my goal. I didn't want to go on and pretend to be the most perfect person or blah, blah, blah. I did, it was, I'm not a faker. I'm not a pretender. Yes, I'm an actress, but most times people hand me lines. That's the only time right. I act. If you don't give me a line, I have no fucking clue. Like, I, like I'm gonna be me, you know? Like, I don't know what else to do. I'm a good shit talker. But at the same time, I'm also, I also want to be around people who continue to believe in motivating and inspiring and growing and wanting to inspire others to grow. You know what I mean? Like that was really important to me. And it, I was always kind of, I don't know any other way to say this, but I was always kind of cock blocked with that because every time I, you know, said, Oh, I'm going to try meditation. Oh, that got poo pooed away. And now look who's pretending to do meditation today. <laughs> uh, it's just ridiculous. ridiculous. It's like, it, it's, it's, to me, it is, it is on the ridiculous side because meditation wasn't something I pretended to do for a storyline. I legitimately studied how to change your brain and it was recommended by several people, by several brain centers. Um, and it, you know, uh, it's the only thing that works for monks. I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure they've got shit down. So, um, the Dalai Lama himself meditates sometimes upwards of 13 to 18 hours a day. Wow. Um, you know, and I know that because my husband uh, uh, protected him at a detail. So um, I will say that I left because I wanted peace. I wanted, I think it's time that they grew and they saw what, how, how you're supposed to work. And the only way to do that was for me not to be there, you know? Um, I have heard how the new season is going and, you know, I, I hope it goes well for them. I, I honestly, like, I have no ill towards anyone on that show. It's not worth my time. It's not worth my energy. And it certainly isn't worth the karma that comes back when you constantly wish ill on others. Um, I'm happy. I've moved on. I mean, I've got projects coming up. That's important for people to know because we got to talk about to your acting career because you're not just a housewife. 
You yeah. are also an actress. You are an entrepreneur. You are a lifestyle expert. You have a lot going on. You have actually a talk show in the works. I, we, we, I know there's not so Yay! much to I'm talk so about, but why don't you tell us a little it's- bit of a tease? Okay, so it's not a talk show. It okay, is so. a it's a home show. Home show. Okay, there we go. Don't worry, it won't be about my <laughs> home, even though I've done tons of home renovations. <laughs> but doing all the home renovations sort of really inspired me as to like, if you really think about what people are focused on right now, because we were, let's say, stranded at home, um, people have started to focus on their homes. So I'm in the talks with a uh, production company and a uh, renovation company. Uh, world, uh, they're a $2 billion renovation company about doing a, a home show and how much I love it. And, but and the biggest thing that I said to both teams when we first started this, and I, I'll also be a co-creator on the show and host the show, um, is the biggest thing for me was that we also include projects that people can do in a one hundred to $300,000 price range of home ownership. Meaning I want to be able to do a $3,000 renovation in someone's backyard and have it make a huge difference so that people can see that it's not just, you know, affir- affirmationable, but also inspiration and possible that yep. you don't have to live, you know, how you are. You can make small changes and make a world of difference. And that was something that was really important to me that I made a difference in every income levels life, you know? That's amazing. So, for me, that was yeah. a big. Well, yeah. it's also so amazing. You know, because, I'm always gonna. Yeah, you're always uh, listen. You're a hustler. You're a you're an independent woman. You're the type of woman that inspires us women to want to be a boss woman. That's the bottom line. You know, you've come such a long way, and you're such a fighter, and you won't give up. Talk because I know you've had challenges too. Like this past season, why do you think the fourth season? You had challenges not only with you know your own life, but your other cast members. Like, what's been how, and how did you move from that? Because it's been hard for me even to move on from that as well. Like in general, in life with the friends, if they hurt me, because you seem oh, very hurt like this season. I, I am, listen, I'm not going to deny that I was not severely hurt. There was a good two months where I was, you know, frozen on the sofa and my therapist would be like, it's okay if you just sit there and watch Netflix all day. That's, that's okay because it helps you not to constantly stay in that depressed state. Um, and yeah, I mean, I was hurt that, you know, again, the tornado twins could, could you know, twist shit um, like crazy. Twins. And um, I should call them the tornado trio. That's but, um, you know, twist, the twisters of everything. Um, and the reality is that it doesn't matter how things get twisted. You still have to take a personal responsibility, which I did. And you have to make a public apology if it offended anyone, which I did. And then you have to grow from it. You have to realize that making the same mistake is what shows a lack of growth. Making, not making the same mistake is how we grow. And I think I will say this, aside from everything on the show, also in the world today, you have a choice. You have a choice in this country. You can name call and trash talk and shit talk and try to destroy. And that doesn't get our country, our community, or our humanity into a better place. Or you can inspire change. And when people talk about, you know, how can I positively inspire change? That's what I want to be a part of. That's what I want to be a part of. And that's, where, that's what I am a part of. And so for me, I, I 100% took a look at um, how things I could say could have been so offensive. And I learned from it. And I grew from it. And I realized that it's about respecting one another. And, you know, I think that's the most important thing. We don't grow without learning to respect one another. And if you look at all the movements that are happening today, they're happening because people don't feel respected. And so for me, I just want to say, I, uh, I think the biggest um, example of how much I respect all ethnicities, race, sexual orientation is my LGBTQ um, advocacy. And, uh, you know, it, I, 
would never walk away from that. So I'm not going to walk away from anything. You know, I'm going to walk away from making the world a better place. And that, I'm, I, I, that's the most important thing to me. When the world becomes a better place, which, you know, smoke a joint and try to get it all to go in slow mode just so I can live that long. <laughs> we have a long, we have a long way to go, but yes, but you're making, but listen, women like you and positive influence like you saying this right now is making a positive change. If we don't have women like you and human beings like you saying this right now, which is mostly important, we will never move on and evolve as a human race because and, we'll just, yeah. I, and I'm not saying don't hold people accountable, hold people accountable, but in a positive way. Like if you know someone has behaved a certain way, don't just call them names, give them something that they can do that then they can show you that change was important to them and that they truly meant to grow. And that's the most important thing. You know, I, once all of this was over, went to drinks with um, Carrie Brittingham and I said, you know, I want to talk through this and I want you to understand that that is not who I am. And it's never been what I've been about. And, you know, we finally got to a, a, an amenable place where it was like, okay, look, we are in a better place and I want to keep it there. And, you know, I can say that a, a huge testament to Carrie Brittingham because, you know, even the first time that someone started to send her direct messages lying about Leanne's out here shopping this story about you and blah, 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 which did happen, she immediately picked up the phone and texted me. And I texted back and then I thought, screw this. I'm picking, I'm calling. I'm going to call. And I called and I said, tell me who it is. I mean, like, I will give you access to all of my emails that I've sent for the last past six months from every one of my, like, seriously. And, you know, I think she realized like, no, we are in a better place. I'm not interested in continuing down a road of trying to destroy anyone. I mean, and I've made that very clear. And, and even in my actions with Carrie Duber, if you look through my actions and, with her. I mean, once I say that I'm going to do things better and make things better, that's exactly what I do. I'm a woman of my word. I think that's what we are so baffled at, that you are the person who says what she means and then you fix it. And I think they keep dragging it on. Do you think it's a do you think it's ever a point of jealousy? Because I want to know for, with bullying, it seems like you've been bullied a lot in the season. Like, do you feel like, or being a scapegoat, I think for telling the truth. And I think I've, I've related to you in life that way. And it's very hard to defend yourself. So what do you think it is that you, let's say you and Carrie and you and um, like uh, Deandra and what was the miscommunication you think? Was it because you were honest all the time? Yeah. Nobody wants to face their truth. And if they're not ready to face their truth, they're certainly willing to twist something you say to, um, what do you call that when you uh, distract, you know, when you oh, gaslighting or manipulation or you, well, manipulation at its finest. And, and let's face it. Look, I should be as much as I've lived in my life, an amazing manipulator, but I don't care to be because it's not authentically who I am. I mean, like, you know, people are like, you know, you could get them all worked up and have them make a mistake. And I'm like, why? Like, so that's how they want to live with me that's their cross to bear because believe it or not, that cross will come back and fall on you. It's, it's, it, it's not a it, being a doing bad things and saying bad things. There are consequences. It, and sometimes it takes years for those consequences to catch you. And you know what? Um, it's how you handle them when, when they do. And I, I'll be honest, like I, yeah, I think that honesty and the truth about their lives, about how they honestly live their lives, where they spend their time. Um, I think that's a problem for a lot of them. And a lot of them were very concerned about things that I would bring up that I never brought up in four or five years, you know? And it wasn't, it wasn't my, I, I learned a lot with Brittingham and it was never, after that, I made sure that it was never my job to bring up things that I thought were serious character flaws in other people yeah just it, what seemed, it seemed you've evolved past that and that's why i think you're moving on bet to bigger and better because you've just evolved as a person um talking about closest of the cast are you close to anyone now is there oh, someone yeah. you regret to is there someone that you regret uh being like not as close to that you would like to you know be close to now or who are you the closest to you would say cameron 
I mean, yeah, she, I, we love you guys. Me and my mom, by the way, are obsessed with both of you. You guys should do a TikTok together because I know I, your TikToks and hers separately are so funny. You guys should just do like a WAP dance or something. I told, um, I told Cameron uh, actually <laughs> that I wanted us to do YouTube videos where she tried to teach me like manners, and I tried to teach her like. <laughs> bad girl way yeah how to be cool <laughs> just the reaction between the two of us you know like the authentic like when she tried to teach me manners like why i have to use a certain fork first like i get believe me i know that but i still thought it would be something really funny to watch our our yes. humors are so different and yet so completely compatible yes. and um and i really felt like um the two of us were just we were funny together. We were always funny together. And it's why, because we had genuine fun together, you know, and we still do. Um, but no, when it comes to the, to the rest of the cast, um, you know, uh, um, I, I wish I would have handled things a lot differently with Brittingham. I really do. I don't think I was in the right space of mine. And I think I was played a lot by some of the other cast to make sure that I didn't stay in that state of mind. I also really kind of created a lot of, um, it was very difficult to work with during my wedding year. And I, when I say difficult to work with, not like I'd show up late or shit like that, but I was just real particular about my wedding not be ruined. Um, because I waited something years to have an actual wedding and while I wanted to have it filmed because I the audience you guys were there when I got engaged and yes. oh my god like I mean oh I cried I mean it was yeah we were every I know you feel like you cried bitch I cried but it was so like sad and like but happy we came a long way with you you let us in a yeah. lot Wanted, and that was honestly why I wanted my wedding. Like everyone I know, even Ramona Singer was like, oh don't God. put your wedding on camera. Really? They'll ruin wow. it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, and I was like, but I, but I felt this such a connection with the audience. Like, you know, I have to share this. This is a journey. I was really, the show for me was a journey of my life. It wasn't me trying to figure out what I can freeze so that six months later I have a storyline with a dead rabbit. Right. That was not me. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm just not like that. Because every week my life, something brand new pops up and I'm like, holy shit. Like, you know, I mean, I, I will tell, like, I just got another magazine feature. Yes, and I want to talk about that. Yes. I'm a Congratulations. So that's amazing. This is, you know how hard it is. I want everyone to, first of all, who's listening to understand too, it's like, you've been in this business for so long. It's not just you've been a housewife, but to get to these monumental moments is not really easy. So congratulations, because that's phenomenal. Um, tell us about this feature. Well, so first I want to say yeah. thank you so much to Sophisticated Weddings Magazine. Everyone should run out to the Barnes and Nobles and get a copy. Um, Rich and I have a huge feature, several pages in their, in their uh, current magazine. And... Um, it was just a pleasure to work with them and to shoot it. You know, we shot it right after we met you in February. Yep. And it was just such a fun, loving, you you know, you met Rich. So when I say it was hilarious to work with my husband, you know what I mean. Like, yes. you know. You guys have a fun time together. Yeah. Oh, my God. We're, we're, what's, we're what's commonly referred to as a hoot and a holler. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm the holler because I'm the loud one. He's the hoot. Um, but, you know, we, we had so much fun shooting that. And, um, and, it, and it, it was just something that was just, you know, so grateful for, so grateful for. And, um, and now I have another feature coming out. Um, and I, I, can't, I can't talk to the whole of everything that I'm involved with with this magazine, but I can say that they have a charity component, which to, for me is um, huge. Paying it forward to women, which is wow. another huge thing for me because at women as a minority, you know, we, we still struggle with um, surviving. Uh, so I'm excited to continue to promote and bring awareness to things that help us survive in a better way. Um, and so this magazine features just, I'm super, super excited about it. I really am. We're so excited for you. Also, are any acting gigs coming? It's, it's all fashion. fashion. Well, yeah, you're I'm a fashionista. Excited. By the way, we all look forward to, you know, the listeners want to know, we all look forward to all your fashion outfits on the Housewives and off camera, even your Instagram. We love it. 
Um, any like lifestyle or fashion tips you can give our audience on like how to like how did you get ready today? Like you look so effortless, you know. I wish. Oh I my god! Like so yeah, I my love the gypsy dress. Love it. You can find it on my Instagram. Although there, I don't put a like to know it because I don't want to work that hard. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but you know what? I I've always been a person that believes in um, number first. First and foremost, accessories are the way to go designer. It's the affordable way for everyone to go designer. Um, you know, and that's been probably my favorite thing. My collection of designer jewelry is off the chain. Matter of fact, this season when Cam was doing a neon party, she, um, or maybe that was for the South Fork thing they did. She was like, oh my gosh, she want, first she wanted to borrow my dress that I wore yeah. to the reception and uh, and it wasn't the right size and then she switched her outfit and then she was like do you have any jewelry and so I sent her pictures of my jewelry she was like girl I should have bought jewelry from you all season I was like anytime you know I'm all about sharing I, I lost more jewelry I love that though about the two of you that you guys never got jealous of each other like you always embrace each other's style why do you think your friendship worked so well because Cameron isn't trying to be anyone but herself. Because Cameron doesn't need me to dress her or style her or help her figure out who her personality is or what designer she loves. Cameron is Cameron. Cameron is a brand. She's, uh, she's just, you know what? She's one of those authentic women. And, you know, she struggles. She really, like, you know, for her, I know at the beginning of the season, she really struggled with how some of the others treated me. Um, and it was a real problem for her. So I know a, a part of her storyline this season is going to be a journey of, you know, how she finds her way to get along with those people because um, that was a real problem for her because she just really – you know, if you ever ask her, she'll tell you, you know, Leanne took the brunt of everything all the time and it just wasn't fair, you know? And so one of the things I love about Cameron is that she doesn't, she doesn't try to, I don't know, candy wrap anything. She's, you know, she candy wraps her life because that's how she genuinely loves to live her life. Right. Exactly. Uh, the honesty, Cameron's just honest. Cameron doesn't lie. Cameron doesn't make stuff up. Cameron's just how she perceives it and talks about it, you know, which is what I love about her um, and why we got along so well. You know, I will say this, um, and uh, she will won't deny it, but when Cameron first joined the show, um, told by several cast members before she joined that I was insane, that I would attack her physically for no reason. She called the production company several times to say how scared she was to join the cast. And to the point where the producer, the owner of the production company was calling me saying, you know, Leanne, you've got to stop. And I'm like, what do I have to stop? What am I doing? Right. What am I doing? Like, no, I wasn't doing anything. And then instead of prejudging, as some other new cast have, she joined the show and you know, you saw what happened in Mexico with the big black dildo. I mean, she, it, something happened. And because she hadn't set her mind up that I was going to hurt her, she was shocked when I went out of my way to try to protect her. And because I understood her, I took the time to understand her and she took the time to understand me. And that people is what relationships should be based on, not what you can do for one another. Yes. And that is why good friends to this day a lot of the listeners want to know do you think you'll ever return back to housewives even though you've evolved do you think you'll ever return i really don't that's not a choice i would make right off the top of my head right now um i like i said i'm really looking for more positive um uh, uplifting ways to be a part of television um inspiring i want to all of these positive adjectives that you can use. That's how I want to be. That's why I joined Housewives to begin with. I joined to bring awareness to small charities that would have never had a chance for the world to know who they are. You know, I mean, especially the Grace Project for me, which is the project that um, is a huge conference. It's the only conference in the world for HIV positive women yeah. um, because we learn so much from one another. Um, and I just, you know, like they, no one, 
to this day, she still gets phone calls from all over the world of women who want to come to this project, this, this weekend conference, because they saw it on Housewives. And they didn't know that anyone would support them. Because, you know, being a woman and being HIV positive is very different than being gay and being HIV positive. And it, there's still a lot of shame attached to it. And that was something that, you know, shame is something I have taken a personal mission to destroy. If I, you know, where it lives, let me know. I'm happy to go over and take it out. Um, but I just, it does nothing good for anyone. And so um, would I go back if the situation and the cast were right? I would. I wouldn't go back as the cast. There, there would have to be several removals before I would go back only because the way that I learn to uplift and encourage and inspire is by sharing my life. And as it is, as long as it remains cast that want to, um, I don't know, shame me for sharing. I'm, I'm not interested in being a part of it. You know, I'd rather like and create, produce, and host my own shows, which is not difficult to do. I yeah. did it before I ever joined Housewives. Right. A lot of people don't realize the, the, the amount of life I lived before I joined Housewives. And the problem is you would have never get to know it because that cast was not going to allow me to share anything about myself. And now because you have the opportunity. Shared, yeah. And every time I shared something, it made them feel worse about their lives. Well, you know, we all have a choice. I just didn't choose to have babies and stay home. That was never going to be my choice. I didn't choose to let my family take care of me. I chose to try to make a difference. That was always going to be my life's path, and it will continue to be my life's path. That is what matters to me. Making everyone else's life better makes my life better. I love that. Do you anticipate, what do you anticipate for the next season to be without you, though? A lot of listeners are really <laughs> sad. We're sad yeah, because I, we don't know I how... Know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. Uh, um, I actually, you know, I will say this. A dear friend of mine, Heidi Dillon, who is just an angel friend of mine, um, she once told me, Picasso used to tell his students, when you're painting something and you get stuck, take out the best part of your painting and continue. So for me, because my personality is the size of all of the rest of them combined, I think removing me from the scenario is a smart choice because now the cast is a more balanced cast. And, um, and I, I hope that that will do a lot of good for the show. It saddens me that some cast members are already picking on and trying to kick out new cast members. That's very sad. It doesn't bode well for the, their, you know, uh, video past, but um, I, I do think that it'll be a much more balanced cast. So I think in that case, hopefully it'll be entertaining. You know, I'm certainly counting on Cam to bring a lot of laughter. I love that. What's your advice to everyone in the entertainment industry who wants to make it in the entertainment industry? And what's your advice even to a new housewife joining any franchise? You know, because bull bullying is a, a lot the problem is bullying has been a problem Ooh. with this, 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 these shows. I've been part of a show where there's bullying, the franchise. society franchise, the yeah. franchises. I mean, so what's your advice, you know, to all of us on how to make it in this cutthroat? Cause you're, I got to tell you, Leah, Leanne, you're very when strong. I, you know what, but God bless me. I'm only so strong. And the reality is just because you find a strong person doesn't mean you should throw everything at them all the time to make your show. Sometimes you also need to support that person. And I never got support from, from really from Bravo or from the production company. And so for me, it was time for me to take a bow because I just needed to support myself, you know, uh, instead of supporting them. Um, what would I tell you? I would tell you, be careful what you wish for, number one. Um, it's not always everything you think it is. You know that, you know, it's not, uh, I mean, there's a difference between Dancing with the Stars and, you know, something like a Real Housewives franchise. Dancing with the Star does make you. I don't, Real Housewives only makes you if you are genuinely entertaining. Um, if you just want to, 
be a part of television. Uh, you know, it just I guess it depends on for me because especially because I come from the movie, TV, right. commercial world. Um, if that is what you want to do, don't give up. Promote the hell out of yourself. Remember, you are your biggest uh, advocate. And um, you know, when I when I was first getting into um into commercial work and tv and film and stuff like that um i would post my demos on facebook and instagram and you know tag production companies i wanted to work with and wow. i just um i never quit i constantly you know i constantly looked at what was working for other people and instead of trying to just copy it i tried to incorporate how my way of doing what they were doing successfully. Um, let's face it. The person who invented the wheel, uh, it has been improved upon, but the reality is we are still using the wheel. And right. so when something works, just figure out how to make it work for you, but make it original and unique to you and make it something that you're the best at. Listen, you're never going to find me like doing a story about being a, yard person or a nail technician or hell even coloring my own hair right. you're not going to find me doing those things those are not things that i'm genuinely you'll never find me cooking <laughs> <laughs> unless you really want to just watch a grill burn from the inside out uh, you're never going to find me cooking you know what i mean like i just freaking lit a jalapeno cheddar sausage on fire the other night thank god my wasn't home to see it or put it out with a fire extinguisher um uh, you know like stick to your be brand good at what you are good at know what you are good at. you know discover who you are and then genuinely want to do and then continue to make that your focus and what I would volunteer for a ton of nonprofit commercials. And because I did, I got to meet a ton of production companies and a ton of directors that were like, you know what? This is so nice of you. I've got a commercial coming up. You should come do that. And, but do you see how, because I was authentic to myself, it benefited my authentic life. So that's all I can say about uh, being a part of being an entertaining person. Do what you love, but be authentic with what matters to you. And if it's just money, then freaking watch Shark Tank all day long and figure out what you can create that's authentic to you and needed in the, in the, in the world. I love that. Well, obviously, I go beyond. <laughs> yeah, obvi obviously, Shark Tank, hello, we're telling you right now, have Leanne on. That's obviously putting it in the universe. You'd be great on Shark Tank as an entrepreneur. Oh, no. No, no, no. Um, I couldn't what, even create a product. I would what, be like, I thought about that product. Product, right. I thought about the, toilet, the light inside the toilet. I thought about that product several times when I was inebriated and missed the seat, <laughs> but did not invent it. What about movies? Any movies upcoming for you? Yes. Are we, are, will, we, will we see you in movies? Because a lot of listeners are asking about it. We've got a lot of DMs. Will Leanne be in a movie? If so, what, what can we anticipate to see her in? Yeah, actually, I signed on to do a movie right before the pandemic hit, and um, the funding is all in place. It's like a, a $7 million movie. Uh, the funding's in place. Um, distribution's done. I think we're just waiting to start shooting. Um, it's, we're shooting in Oklahoma. So I'm, I'm excited. You know, I've got, I've got, still have movies. I still have TV shows. I st I'm still doing commercials. I'm still doing a ton of voiceover work. Um, and in, in midst of all of that, I'm completely redoing my home, my indoor and outdoor, loving on my dogs, uh, learning what it means to be a newlywed and how to keep the romance. Yeah. How do you, how do you keep the romance and how do you balance it all? That's a, that's a, you know, a really big question for all of us. Can you have it all? Yeah, you can. You just have to be really energetic. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Maybe you should come up with that product, like an organic energy. I, 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 I'm working on something for like, uh, for, to get me back in shape, healthy eating or healthy, you know, cause I'm not a fan of working out. We all know that. Uh, obviously I need to, uh, but not a big fan of it. So I'm trying to find something fun that you want to do, but it also teaches you something new. You know, I'm all yeah. about edutainment. If it can be educational and entertaining, that's really what I'm into. It's what I've always been into. Uh, so I'm working, you know, there's always, listen, if I think there's something missing in the world, I'm always apt to try to create it. That's so what I love it. That's what we love about you. 
And one last question. I just want to yeah. be a great place. I want the world to be a great place. I want everyone to be happy and healthy. And I, I just, I really do. I'm, I'm not a fan of people who, you know, suffering. I just want to, you know. What do you think we can do on that note to start changing the world little by little? What do we need to do? What can we Become do? Become involved. You cannot sit on your sofa and bitch that your community sucks or that your, 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 your politicians aren't the right people that you want to represent you. Legit, get off your ass. If they don't, you don't like what you got, get off your ass and vote. Get off your ass and volunteer. Get off your ass and be the change you want to see. Um, really, like, don't, it's easy to, to, most people live lives of die, of quiet desperation. And I, there's nothing quiet about me. And that is why I have never been desperate. I speak up, I speak up loud enough to be heard. And, and if I'm saying the wrong things, I quite frequently get corrected. And so that I can learn to say the right things and make the right difference. And, you know, that's what it's all about. It's about getting up and being a part of it, getting involved. Um, you know, I, I mean, rock the vote, rock, rock your community, um, make a difference. There, so many nonprofits right now are struggling with volunteers because a lot of their stuff has been, you know, shut down to delivery only. So be the person who delivers good news or, or be the person who volunteers to call 10 people in their community and check on them and see how they're doing. Be the depression hotline for 12 of your friends. Do something. There's something there's something that every single person can do. And if you think there isn't, you DM me and I will help you discover five things you can do to not just make your life better, to, but to make the world around you a better place. Because really, I just feel like that's what God put us all out here to do. I love that. One more question before we wrap up. Chanel yeah. in the city, what's your favorite place in your city or in New York City when you come? to just escape and just, you feel just a hole and you just feel happy. What's your favorite place to go? Can I say it's not a place. Okay. It's always the people. Oh, it's all when I was with you and we had so much fun. So much fun. We had so much fun. It's the people. If you surround yourself with the right people, the place won't effing matter. And that's the truth. You got to get the right people around you. You got to, you got to listen to the right people. Um, if they uplift you and inspire you, then you're on the right path. And that's it. You know, like what you're doing with this podcast, you are an inspiration and you won't know it until you get that first DM that says, thank you. You changed my life today. And that's, those are the, that's, that's what you look for. I know most people are looking for the sponsorships, but in reality, <laughs> in reality, those messages are more valuable than any amount of gold I because, love you. you know, changing someone's life for the better. And you know, you do that changing someone's life for the better is, is a legacy. And that's what we should aspire to leave a legacy. I love you, Leanne. You have been so amazing. That is, let's end that on a beautiful note. Where can everybody follow you and, uh, you know, check out your website. Please let us know. Okay, I'm honestly these days just focused on Instagram. I'm gramming my booty, y'all. Yeah, we love it. Uh, Keep gramming, uh, by the way. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. I'm I'm just gramming, and um, uh, I kind of took a step away from Twitter for a while, and uh, I'm working on completely revamping my website. I'm not doing too well on my personal website because I've been real busy working on a nonprofit website that's not up yet. Um, but you know, basically I'm on the gram almost every day. So come by. If you're one of the first people to comment, you always get me. I'm snarky, sassy, and uplifting in every possible way. And, um, and that's where I talk to most people. So I love it. And thank Leanne, God for Instagram. Thank God for Instagram. No, seriously, your Instagram has helped inspired me during the quarantine. Hey, it's Leanne Luckin from Real Housewives of Dallas. And you're listening to Chanel Lamari on Chanel in the City. Don't miss our interview.